Hello and welcome to another Tavasoli's electrical training channel. Today in this session I'm just going to teach you how to use soldering iron to solder things. I'm just going to talk about the differences between soldering iron and a soldering gun. <coughs> and also the difference between uh, or the differences between the uh, lead different types of solder and flux. Now First of all, at the moment in this video, I'm using this soldering iron, which is a Weller uh, brand. Uh, you can have different types of brands. Uh, what you need to look at is the wattage. Uh, depending on what type of work you're doing, you need to choose the wattage of the soldering iron or the soldering gun. Categorically, the difference between the soldering iron and a soldering gun is just the way it looks and how you hold it and also the power usually with the soldering obviously, obviously with a soldering iron like this um, you have to plug it in like it is already and let it warm up it takes a few minutes to warm up and to be able to work with it uh, with a soldering gun you don't need to waste that energy and have it powered up for a few minutes or a long time sometimes depending on the wattage of the soldering iron before you can start working so that is the advantage of a soldering gun over a soldering iron but some people find it handy with this um, some people are more uh, handy with the soldering gun and I personally can use both of them and, and I have both of them at the, at the same time, sometimes depending on what I'm doing, I just use uh, intermittently between one or the other. Uh, what I find annoying sometimes with the soldering iron is the fact that you have to wait for it to get hot and the tip, the tip um, with the screw here, sometimes it's annoying because it gets loose and um, <coughs> it doesn't heat up. The solder itself, the soldering iron gets hot, really hot, red hot, but the tip hasn't gone hot. The, the reason for that main usually is the fact that it's not connected together properly. Uh, you need to tighten the screw. And the screws, sometimes uh, they go knackered quickly. They snap or something happens to them. In my case, it hasn't yet, but the tip was rubbish and I changed it to a different one. So that's that. Uh, as far as the solder itself is concerned, uh, different varieties of solder in, in the market. Some of them are thin and some of them are thicker, like this one, and it goes really thick sometimes depending on what type of job you're doing. If you're doing electronic work, 40 watt uh, soldering iron is good for you, 40, maybe 30, 30, 35 watts. Anything more than 40 watt, you gain to. Yeah, you have to be really good at soldering. You do. You have to do it quick because if you spend a lot of time soldering the pins of a, for instance, a transistor, you might burn the transistor. So you have to be able to do it quickly in a very quick, um, short period of time. If you use hot, you know, hotter soldering irons or guns like uh, with bigger wattages, like 60 watt, you know, and on on upward then you might damage your electronic components the solder themselves like I said they come in different varieties shapes and percentages uh, as, as for the contents um, inside the solder um, in this case for instance you have uh, a one millimeter diameter of um, tin uh, which is 60% tin and 38% uh, lead uh, and you have some flux in it uh, already uh, whereas this one is 0.7% uh, sorry no point uh, sorry with this in this case 99.3% tin uh, and it is lead free uh, it is safer to use this one uh, because you don't get the fume uh, which is harmful which comes from the lead 
but however they're all uh, as far as I'm concerned they're all harmful that's why I have it in the in the open air here and <coughs> uh, if you're doing it inside you best, your best bet is to have a um, fan uh, extraction fan an extraction fan will just drag it out um, extract the fan of, of the extract the fume obviously and uh, it has its own filter recirculate the air back to the um, to the room safely the way we solder is in this case I'm just going to use a third hand here as a helper and I have this crocodile clip that I need to solder a wire to so what I'm gonna do first thing you do you hold the soldering iron this way like a pen or pencil you don't hold it like a sword you don't do that unless you're doing massive industrial work with a lot higher and bigger wattage than this soldering iron in case of transmission lines and um, those kind of stuff but in this case you're doing delicate stuff you need to hold it like this first thing you do you clean the tip either by before you get before you get it hot heated up you sandpaper it make sure it's nice and clean and again you dip it into the flux a little bit just to that clean cleans the tip a little bit and put tin or solder on it just a little touch yeah like I said um, this is the problem with you see, you see it, the tip again if it's loose it will give you that problem at the moment it's actually good it was the it was the solder itself now what I'm gonna do is also you wet this sponge so you have a wet sponge here to sometimes rub the tip here and clean it when it's really dirty so I want to solder this wire to this clip the first thing you do you dip this wire into the flux a little bit just a little touch over it <coughs> and have your solder ready most people that I know they don't even use flux because they say the flux is already inside the solder yes most solder or uh, tins that you buy they, they do have an element of flux in it but usually it's not enough it doesn't clean it and it doesn't it takes a long, long time to solder anything to it but in this case you can see how fast you can see just quickly as soon as I put that on the wire the wire is got a layer of a coat of solder on it so that's the first thing you do you dip it into the solder you put a layer of so solder on the wire so they're not stranded here and there you don't have the strands of wire here and there they're all in one place and then after this is this is after you've twisted it and then put it in place where I want to solder in this case is this crocodile clip and I'm going to tighten that then again you can dip your solder a tiny bit in the solder soldering flux heat the wire and the element that you're soldering to and then put the solder on top of it it's a quick job in this case because I put a lot in it because it's only a <coughs> crocodile clip it's not a transistor or anything I need a lot of solder in, inside there so I warm it from the bottom with the soldering iron and put the lead over it or the tin or solder whatever you call it and 
that. Look, it's nicely done here. <coughs> uh, in fact, put put too much in there. If you put too much salt there, you can either spread it like this one. Uh, it doesn't matter, and wipe it on there. Um, <coughs> the sponge here, if it's wet, and you can get rid of that. Or if it's electronic elements and spreading it all over is not good and you don't have enough space then use this soldering pump i'll put all the disc description the link uh, in the description you'll have all the links to all the tools uh use right thank you very much for this session again um we'll see you again with another exciting video As you can see, the solder is nice and smooth, and it's not a cold solder. Cold solder is when uh, you have air inside there, and it looks like it's soldered, and it's, it, it looks um, connected, but inside is basically not connected, not joined properly. You might have intermittent disconnections um, and problems in your circuit if you do that. But that's it for your purple clip. I'll see you again in another video.